next witness is uh, Milo Iannopoulos, who's a British journalist and broadcaster, um, currently based in Los Angeles, but actually tonight here, which is a good thing for us, uh, and a leading voice uh, on what's known as the ALT, and I think that stands for Alternative Right. Um, there. Uh, hi. What drives you, and is it the same as what drives support for Mr Trump? I think it is. I think a lot of the same concerns that animate um, the sort of dissident, mischievous voters on the right and the left... Uh, who don't like the establishment very much, whether it is um, a rejection of globalism and globalization, whether it is concerns about immigration from particular parts of the world, whether it is um, wholesale horror and rejection of political correctness and social justice warriors and feminism and the lunacy of the far left on college campuses. I think that stuff is getting to quite a lot of people at the moment. And the um, I wouldn't call myself a member of the alt-right, but I'm certainly the journalist who's given them the fairest hearing in press. Uh, I have a great deal of sympathy with many of their concerns. Drinking from the same well. Uh, Matthew Tanner. It seems to me that modern America is just full of hate. Is that progress? No, of course it isn't. You're, you're reading what isn't full of hate, right? Isn't no, progress. you're reading the wrong people. You know, the only place that... Um, <laughs> definitely reading the wrong people. No, I mean, you go to the... I was at, so, so Black Lives Matter versus Blue Lives Matter versus... Well, I mean, if there's hatred, it's coming from the political left. I mean, I'll certainly, I'll certainly get, grant you that there is plenty of hate on the left. But I was at the um, Republican National Convention in Cleveland, and it was remarkable for two reasons, I think. One is the amount of glamour and glitz and, um, and showmanship and, and wonderful sort of restoration of... of aspiration back to politics that Trump is bringing. And the other was how joyful it was, how happy people were to be there. You know, there were smiles on everyone's faces. And when I went the following week to, to Philadelphia um, for the DNC, very different picture. Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know... If, if well, we know that, don't we? I mean, Mar Mario Cuomo once famously said that, you know, we campaign in poetry and we govern in prose. So you're just telling me the fact that campaigning can be fun, but government's a different matter. And you pray, don't, I mean, it seems to me that this is what's going on here, is that those people who are campaigning don't have the difficulties of government, and so government itself, those who have to make decisions, are easy prey. Well, the analysis of most of Bernie's voters, most, uh, well, Bernie's supporters, they won't be voters, uh, most of, of Trump's supporters and voters, and many other people who aren't particularly interested in politics, which is most of my generation and everyone younger, um, is that those in power who supposedly have, as you, as you would put it, the, you know, the chops for governing, have done a pretty bad job of it. They don't like those people, they don't respect those people, they don't consider any of those people to be, um, to be leaders that inspire or interest uh, them. And whether they're on the political right or the political left, that establishment, as my generation and younger sees it, has failed. Uh, and we want the entire system to burn. So it's a good thing if levels of trust in authority are very low. People, it's a good thing if people assume almost everyone in authority is only in it for themselves. Uh, for politics, absolutely. I want them to be regarded with as much suspicion as possible, to, so they bring their A Is that game. because you think government itself is, is a bad thing? Yeah, like you prefer, yeah, yeah, you're basically, yeah, for the most part. You're basically libertarian. Yes, for the most part, yes. So, um, this, so this kind of playful anti-establishment thing is actually in pursuit of a pretty hardcore political agenda, which is the dismantle of, go well, of, hardcore, go of, of government. It's really. not a hardcore political agenda, um, but I do, th you know, I do think the government in the, in the West, in pretty much every country in the West, I would say, yeah, uh, it's probably too big, gets itself involved in too many things, into fears in people's lives unnecessarily. I mean, I'm a culture guy, right? So I'm not particularly so, interested in foreign right. policy so beyond... You, you, just to ask them, as a culture yeah. guy, yeah. interested in minority rights, so you, you think that a, a, a country with no government would be a place for the people, don't you Did think it actually? Don't no. you think it actually be a place that would be run Did by the powerful, by no vested government? interests? No, I'm, I'm not sure. I see. The, I'm not sure. I see the role of the government to be uh, sort of um, far left uh, wealth distribution activists. I don't think that's what the government is for. I think the government there, there to make sure the roads are okay uh, and to make sure that you know the country has a defence system. Um, no, I did never. I never said um, that. I think there should be no government. I said that government is overreaching in the West, which I think the vast majority of the public agrees with. Uh, McElvoy. So when you make this case, I think you, you spoke earlier about the wonderful aspiration of, of Donald Trump. Mm. Were you thinking there that this would, would sort of open up intellectual inquiry? People would, would think better thoughts and aspire to better things? Or are you actually just attracted to the, the fact that a lot of people think it's, it's exciting, it's disruptive, it's you know, the it, equivalent of being able to throw some empty beer bottles around? Well, the answer is both. Um, and I think they're both good reasons. Uh, are they in conflict, though? No, not really. I think that the, the overall effect of Donald Trump is different to the immediate impression of Donald Trump. And the overall effect of Donald Trump, I hope, will be, and the, the, I think the genie's already out of the bottle, to represent an existential threat to 
uh, the existence of political correctness to the nannying, school marmish, pearl clutching, safe space culture to trigger warnings to. You are wearing pearls. I am. Well, I, I am. I anyway, am. No, um, um, <laughs> I, I try not to clutch them. Uh, I, you know, I, I think the effect of Donald Trump is going to be to remind people that nothing bad happens when you are mischievous and cheeky and naughty and waspish and catty. And actually, actually, much of the best debate happens in that space. Are you space. convinced about that? I mean, to the extent we do. I mean, should I be asking, do you believe that demagoguery exists, that language used in a certain way, whether it's by Trump or by, mm. by someone else, or mm. other historical examples would seem to suggest that they do have an effect? It does have an effect. Well, it has an effect, but I don't, I, I don't really believe in such a thing in hate speech. I don't really believe there's such a thing as hate crimes. It seems ridiculous to me that it's more of a crime to hit me than other people just because I'm gay. Everybody wants to hit me. It should be less of a crime. Um, you know, I, I think it's ridiculous, and I don't, really, I don't really believe in this sort of violent speech thing the left keeps pushing. It, seems, it strikes me as completely preposterous. Um, the effect of Donald Trump is going to be to open up the Overton window and to make things acceptable again, which ought to be acceptable. Perfectly okay, reasonable and respectable just points of view. Short. So just let, let me just... You, so when you say the speech doesn't matter, it's playful. I think what you're suggesting is it's harmless, it's playful. It sort of brings For the out, most part, yeah. For the most part. Well, which are the bits that you don't think will work, will work that way? Oh, direct incitements to physical violence or Only that. propagation of terrorism. Yeah, I'm a pretty much a free speech fundamentalist. So I think the... in, all, in all cases, more speech, not less, is better. Sure, right. More speech, not less, is better. So when you get into you know, the, the, one of the, the many, I mean, we're spoiled for choice, but on the, the Mexicans, they're bringing drugs, they're committing crimes, they're rapists, they send yeah. us the bad ones. Yes. Who's doing the raping, etc., etc. Yes. So that's harmless in your, in your view? Why would it be harmful? I mean, in the majority of cases, he's right about all of those things. Uh, after Orlando, when gay people got mown down by a Muslim, uh, you know, gunman, what the left was saying was, oh, peace, love, and understanding is the way to do this. This was toxic masculinity. This was gun culture. No, it wasn't. It was a toxic, poisonous ideology you, that you wants me... You moved swiftly off the, 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 the charge no, giving... that a certain ethnic group were doing more of these crimes than other people. They are. Right, so they that's are. your, your it's a statistical and I was, claim. And I, they are, and I'm also giving you an analogy from Orlando, which I know well, which is if you deny people the uh, information that they need, the ability to protect and defend themselves, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, the, the resources that they, they need to look after themselves, if you don't tell them the truth, which the media and politicians don't, they lie to and about the public all day, every day, about everything, the wage gap, campus rape culture, immigration, all of these things, uh, then you're doing them a disservice. And that is far more dangerous. So it's the media's fault. It's far more, I think the media's part of the problem, but it's far more dangerous so than any witness. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos, thank, thank you very much indeed.